did I make a mistake drafting Olave over Ridley with second round pick 12 team league? I have been pounding the table the entire off season for Calvin Ridley. Ridley median 25% target share over the last two seasons he's played. He's now on an ascending offense. We like that. They're going to get into shootouts. It's going to be really beautiful when the Jacksonville Jaguars are going to be forced to throw and be remain competitive. We like that for Trevor Lawrence. We like that for Calvin Ridley and the rest of the Jaguars. I am not bullish uh, from a fantasy perspective on Chris Olave. I like Olave. Like I, I feel like I have to give disclosures like and, and caveats and all of that. I understand that Olave put up fantastic metrics last year. He put up the number six yards per route run, 2.42. That's elite, elite yards per route run with Andy Dalton for most of the season. Jameis Winston only for a couple games. I understand that there are efficiency metrics for Chris Olave, which was phenomenal last year. The problem is nothing has really changed. You can't tell me that Derek Carr is a significant upgrade over what Andy Dalton did last year uh, overall. You can't tell me that. The efficiency metrics would tell you a similar story, that they are very close to the same or within the same range of outcomes. And Olave did that all last year without Michael Thomas, a player who has historically commanded a 20 to 25 percent plus target share. Now, let's say cons- conservatively, Michael Thomas only commands, only commands like a 20% target share, which I feel is low, but 20%. That didn't exist last year for all but three games for Chris Olave. Like Chris Olave, while Michael Thomas was there, his average uh, target share was 25%. When Michael Thomas left, it was 26%. There was almost no difference. So with Olave, I don't see the pathway to upside when the pass to run ratio is projected to stay the same. It was like 53 to 47% pass to run, which is one of the lowest pass rates in the NFL. Like why would they pass right that <laughs> they've got a decent enough off the offensive line. They've got a lot of options running the ball. You've got Alvin Kamara, who's only gone for three games. You've got Taysom Hill, who's the thumbnail of tonight's uh, live stream. And you also have rookie Kendry Miller. You also have, of course, Jamal Williams, who scored 17 touchdowns on the ground last year. So there are a lot of pathways to run the ball. Number one, running the ball is not passing the ball. And number two is it slows the game down which decreases the volume of plays. And that's a problem for trying to get the volume of, of passes, right? Maybe the run rate is pretty high, but maybe you're running a lot of plays that usually doesn't happen too much um, because the game will slow down. So I think the pace of play is an issue. I think the competition like interdivisionally, I don't think they're going to be the saints are supposed to, win the division which means they're favorites and if they're favorites that means they're going to be running because teams tend to run more when they're leading right so there's a logic behind seeing a limited upside for chris olave in the mid second round now if you get him in the third round i'm fine with chris olave in the third round but second round chris olave is something i've been preaching all off season and actually if if you look on my twitter earlier today follow me on Twitter at FF Stalder, you'll see that Matt Kelly, the pod father from player profiler actually called me out on this. And he said that Bradley, I disagree with you. And, and I love it. I love it. Come at me. If you like the content, find this helpful. Make sure you hit that red subscribe button on the YouTube channel.